Welcome to worship this morning. Glad you could be here on this last Sunday in August. Where is summer gone? Well, I was on vacation for a lot of it. That's where it's gone. So I'm glad to be here. I'm glad that you're here this morning. Um, I don't think there are any special announcements for our service. It's kind of our usual summer service. So I'll invite you to stand as you're able and we'll sing together when morning gilds the skies. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Amen. Trusting God's promise of forgiveness, let us confess our sin against God and one another. Eternal God, our Creator, in you we live and move and have our being. Look upon us, your children, the work of your hands. Forgive us all our offenses and cleanse us from proud thoughts and empty desires. By your grace, draw us near to you, our refuge and our strength, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Christ died for us while we still were sinners. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth, that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Yes, Raylan is here. Raylan, you... Raylan's not here? Raylan's up there with Kiddist. Okay. All right. I was like, I can't see her. There she is. All right. How are we going to do this? Because I... Well, we can sit up, that. We can sit up here. That's what we can do. Raylan's got to take the long walk from the balcony. Careful though, don't fall. Good morning. How are you this morning? I knew that, that uh, Helena wasn't going to be here, so I was like, oh, if Raylan's not here, then I won't be able to tell my story. I have a story to tell today. Um, do you have any, any favorite stuffed animals or anything like that? Yeah, what's your, what is it? You have a lot of them. What's your favoriteest? You have, you have a big dog that uses the pillow, huh? So that's pretty good. When I was really little, um, it must have been preschool. So you're going into kindergarten or first grade? First grade. I see you're growing up so fast. Um, when I was really little, I think it was preschool, I had to have my tonsils out. And it was very scary um, because I'd never been in the hospital. That's when, like, you had your tonsils out. You were there for, like, three days. And there were all these big shots and all these big people and this scary place, scary place. But I had a favorite stuffed animal that went with me to the hospital. It was a little cat. It was a stuffed cat, about this big. And I, I recall, as I think about this story, that we put a Band-Aid on the cat's neck like he was having his tonsils out too. They don't go through your neck to get your tonsils. They just go right here through your mouth. Um, but in all of that scariness, big people, masks, medicines, strange places, strange smells. Um, that stuffed animal gave me some comfort, right? It helped me be brave. And it stayed with me all three of those days. It stayed with me for a long time, but it stayed with me in the hospital for all three of those days. And I was having my tonsils out when I was really little. Uh, that stuffed animal was a great comfort to me, as I imagine your big dog is, maybe on a stormy day. Are you afraid of storms? Like the really strong storms and thunder and stuff. You can hang on to your dog. In today's gospel reading, the disciples, they've traded in their stuffed animals for other things. They've traded in their stuffed animals, especially for Jesus. Peter says, it's you, Jesus, that we go with. It's you that give us strength and comfort and assurance. I don't have any stuffed animals anymore. Yeah, I was going to steal one of my girls, but uh, kid is... You've probably never seen Kittis has a teddy bear. It's as big as me. I didn't think I should bring that because it wasn't meaningful to me. Um, but Jesus can provide us that sort of comfort that sometimes we find now in, in, uh, in stuffed animals. Jesus is there with us always. We can call out to him and pray to him and be comforted and assured and be, and be brave even when it's scary, right? So that's what the story is about in today's gospel reading as you hear it. All right. Um, is Raylan going to be here next week? Are you going to be here next week? Not sure? No? Okay. All right. You'll just have to listen to me the next time you come back again then because I can't give you the bucket because you're going to be gone next week. So, thank you for coming up. Have a good day. Going to go all the way back upstairs again? All right. Keep running. Keep running. After God has delivered Israel from Egypt and brought them into the promised land, in our first reading, Joshua calls upon the people to respond with reverence, service, and faith. Christians share in the power of God, operative in the resurrection and the exaltation of Christ to heaven, and in his victory over the forces of evil, 
In our second reading, the author of Ephesians tells us that we need to use this power to overcome evil forces in the world. So I think Mary's reading for us. We hear the word. Thank you. 
Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Someone up at the soundboard, can you, maybe kiddos, can you mute the button that says overhead choir. Just press the, the yellow button to mute it. Overhead choir. It's going to be kind of on your right. Overhead choir. It already is muted. It's lit. Oh, okay. Thank you. That will help a little bit of the ringing. So. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To whom do you go? It would have been better if we'd sung that, that fourth setting where we use exactly those words as our, our gospel acclamation. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. So I pose the question to you today, to, to whom do you go? Or to what do you go? Front page of the newspaper, again, has an article about drug use, and, and we know about epidemics of, of opioid use and addictions and all these sort of things. People go to all kinds of things other than Jesus. All kinds of addictions exist, and it's easy for us to identify the stuff that's out there, right? Because we're not addicted to opioids, or we're not addicted to, to marijuana, or we're not addicted to, to gambling, or we're not addicted to alcohol, or we're not... But all of those things are just this far away from even us. And when we see it on the front page, we should be reminded of how tempting it is in our world to be drawn away and not... 
to answer the question, to whom do you go, with the name Jesus. I think addictions are a modern challenge to what it means to be Christian in the world, what it means to be the church in the world. We've been thinking a lot about it in the context of the articles we've seen in the paper, uh, the, the play I saw, There Is No Place, about homelessness, kind of based on the services in Janesville. Addiction is this strange thing where we, we sacrifice our life in order to get a thing that really diminishes our life but makes us think that it's better. And as I hinted at a moment ago, it's not just about opioids for those people over there, but it's the gambling addictions. And it's the shopping addictions. And it's the alcohol addictions in a state that I'm always amazed when we go places and, and everyone's got a drink. It can't be an event if there's not a drink. To whom do you go? To what do you go when life becomes difficult or the stresses become too much? I think an answer to addictions, epidemics of opioid, opioid uses, and our, our reliance on alcohol in so many ways, and our numbing of ourselves by shopping, or by gambling, or by just mindless entertainment. A solution is not as simple as one thing, but has to do with the community that God intended for the church to be. Because the solution is a, a whole life solution. A solution that has to do with connection to other people and living in a certain way and having the assurance of the love of those around us and the love of God to give us the strength to do what we need to do. There is a need in our world Let's just not make it world. There's a need in Janesville. There's a need in your neighborhood. There's a need in our households for a real community of Christ. A real community of Christ. A community that can answer authentically, to whom else can we go but you? Jesus, our Lord and Christ. The church is meant to be the community for our healing and our wholeness, for our support. And I think there are three essentials to an authentic community and a community like the church is meant to be. There are expectations for how we live together, how we will treat one another, Jesus demonstrates what those expectations look like when he says, love one another as I have loved you. It's a pretty high expectation for the church. But who amongst us doesn't need the love of fellows and neighbors and friends? There are expectations in an authentic community. There's also accountability, so that when we fail to meet those expectations, someone says, you're not doing what you need to do to help our community be what it's meant to be. There's accountability to those expectations, but there's also support, that we lift one another up and strengthen one another so that those expectations are achievable because we are working together. Now all this talk about expectations and accountability and support and authentic Christian community and what the church is meant to be comes from another part of this scripture reading today. Jesus, throughout chapter 6 of John's Gospel, we've been reading it for four weeks now, has been talking about himself as the living bread from heaven, talking about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. And at this point, at the very end of chapter 6, we hear about some people saying out loud, this is a difficult teaching, who can accept it? And then 
they drift away. I think they drift away not just because Jesus is talking about eating flesh and drinking blood, but also then because he ups the ante. Well, if that offends you, what if I were to tell you that I'm going to ascend back to heaven and people don't know what to do with that? So they drift away, we're told in the scripture. Because of this, many of Jesus' disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. It's pretty rare that the teachings of Jesus cause people today who are sitting in the pews to turn back and no longer go about with him. It's rather all the distractions of the world. We get too busy on Sunday. We got too many things to do. We'd rather sleep in. And we, we just kind of drift away. And people will be more than glad to tell you about how they are a Christian. But are they part of a community with expectations and accountability and support? And if that community is made up of those who have no accountability, expectations, or support, what kind of community is it? There may be a club. Jesus calls us to be something more. And something more that our world, our community, our neighborhoods, our homes and households need. A place where Jesus is in fact Lord and we don't just play, pay lip service to that. Jesus is Lord but Jesus never tells me what to do. Jesus is Lord, but Jesus makes no difference in how I live my life. Jesus wants a community, a community of disciples that be can become the body of Christ in the world today. And you and I are called into that community, but it is formed by Christ, by Christ's expectations. Under Christ's expectations, we hold one another accountable and we support one another in our love for one another and our love for the world. The challenge to that is our self-centeredness and our selfishness. For in some way, all the addictions and all the distractions and all the numbingness of the world comes back to our self-centeredness and our selfishness. But God in Christ, through the Holy Spirit that is given to you, calls and gathers and enlightens and sanctifies and keeps us in true faith that we might be the body of Christ in the world. So that we too might call out in the words of Peter, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Insofar as you and I and we together can become that community of Christ where Jesus is the Lord, where we live as the body of Christ, where we serve one another and the world God loves, we can play a part in reducing and diminishing the pains and ills of the world. Things like what shows up on the front page, addictions, violence. Jesus has called you, has chosen you to be part of that authentic body of Christ at St. John Lutheran Church, the corner of Parker Drive and Peace Court, for the sake of this neighborhood and this community and this world. Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. In you is spirit and life. Amen.
God has made us God's people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in our loving and almighty God, who abundantly provides the bread of heaven to all who hunger, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. That God bless the church universal in every place, inspiring strength and courage to boldly proclaim the mystery of the gospel. And in thanksgiving for the anniversary of this week of the baptism of Eric Harmel, Chad Holty, Barrett Greenwood, Tyler Kirsten, Richard Long Henry, James Niles, Rayanne Ele, Bradley Rail, Cameron Thompson, Taylor Thompson, Diane Willard, Williard, Zachary Johnson, Reagan Leone, Jacob Leith, Dana Mc, McFarlane, Paul Rudkin, Gloria Smithback, Sharon Trumpy, and Gary Walto. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. That God, the Creator, bless wild animals and family pets, prairies and kitchen gardens, beaches and sandbox, mountains and hearths, and is present with all those in who rebuild after natural disasters. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. That God spread the gospel throughout the nations of the world, announcing the words of eternal life to peoples in every land and country and community. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. That God remember the poor and the brokenhearted and rescue all those in trouble. We pray especially for Robert, Wanda, Wanda, Diane, Wanda, Roger, Shannon, Yvonne, Arella, Pat, Jean, Gary, Kitty, Doris, Wanda, Betty, Barrett, Lori, Maggie, Brenda, John, Carol, Bob, Dor Doris, Bob, Melvin, James, Al, Jim, Preston, Brad, Elaine, Jim, Lois, Jean, Merrick, Jada, Rick, Bob, Phyllis, Steve, Karen, Carol, Tim, Elsie, Carleen, and those who name now silently or aloud. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. That God protect members of this congregation along all our ways, and empower us to serve Christ in sincerity and faithfulness. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God, that God redeem the lives of those who have served in the faith and raise them up according to the promises of Jesus Christ, the bread that nourishes eternal life. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Almighty and loving God, we look to you in hope and trust knowing that you will do far more than we can ask or imagine. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share Christ's peace with our brothers and sisters. As we receive the morning's offering.
please stand as you're able and let us pray. Father in heaven, you fatten nature for its winter fast, which shows the folly of our fear as we work for daily bread. Accept these offerings made in hope and lead us to glory in your faithful care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world, to fulfill for us your holy will, and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people, and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come, let us eat, for now the feast is spread. Thanks be to God. Please be seated.
you missed any one of desires to receive the second. Please stand as you're able and let us pray. <clears throat> In your sacrament, O oh Lord, you have cleansed and strengthened us by your all-sufficient grace. Come with us now, help us with our work, and lead us to salvation. We ask this in your name, Jesus Christ, who reigned with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for a couple of brief announcements. <laughs> no one's making their way up, so I will start. Um, I'll invite you to come forward and kind of see the, the, the remodeling as it's taken shape uh, over last week. Um, we do have our, our original communion rails have been straightened out and they are prepared to come back. Hopefully that's going to happen in the next couple of days. And so you can just imagine our communion rails along this front edge. Um, Peace, the Spirit sends us forth to serve. Thanks be to God.